A year ago, Jimmy White's dramatic win in a playoff brought the Moscone Cup to Europe for the first time. Now captain Oliver Ortman hopes to lift the cup again, but the USA has pulled back dramatically with two wins on the trot. It is now just 12-11 to Europe. The match is on a knife edge as we join Alan Hughes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, will you welcome, please, one of the great entertainers of all time in the history of the game. And after a lifetime of traveling the world, the grizzly bear is still as sharp as ever. Ladies and gentlemen, into the action. He's the former national nine ball champion of America, the Tennessee Tarzan, Mike Massey. <laughs> He's one of the great entertainers of all time in the history of the game. And after a lifetime of traveling the world, the grizzly bear is still as sharp as ever. Ladies and gentlemen, into the action. He's the former national nine ball champion of America, the Tennessee Tarzan, Mike Massey. <laughs> And ladies and gentlemen, his multi-talented opponent from his own world, the world of... Oh, thank you. Yes, I do. I love the guy. I want to take him home with me <laughs> to the States. <laughs> He's been giving you one or two lessons in the art of snooker, has he? Yeah, he. he um, uh, I asked him to sh show me how to, you know, show me how he does it, and uh, he was very uh, receptive. And he threw 21 balls on the table, and the snooker table just ran them all off. Uh, it was just like, just like we do on the pool table. <laughs> There's the local hero. He's notched up two. Terrific victories in this Moscone Cup already. Two former world champions. And here he is in action again. A uh, big, big match for the States, this one. And a big match for Mike Massey Most definitely. as well, Roger. He's been in winning positions, hasn't he? But hasn't quite been able to finish things off. Yeah, he hasn't been able to close his opponents out. And uh, he's, he, I, I think he's, you know, concentrated, concentrated last night on, on, on his closing efforts. And uh, I think he's going to be a new man today. <laughs> Has his confidence been affected at all, though, by the fact that uh, he hasn't picked up that many points so far? No, no, no. He knows that he's never out of a pool Is match. this a p potential plant, Roger? Excuse me? Is this oh, a possible plant? Oh, um... Well, he's, he's probably going to play the one ball two rails. Well, I could be wrong. I don't know. He might well, let's be going see. for the nine We're going to find out very shortly. Yeah, he might be going for the nine, no? I don't know what he was doing there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he was trying to uh, plant the cue ball behind the uh, two balls on, uh, you know, the, the two and the seven, the blue and the uh, brown. Mm. Well, we'll see if Ronnie's going for it. No, he's not. Yes. Um, yeah. Okay, so um, that was an honest assessment anyway, Roger. What about the Moscone Cup? Uh, honest assessment of that. It's a format that uh, you clearly enjoy. Yes, I do enjoy it. And um, 
Well, I think it. I think the format gives uh, the Europeans a chance to beat us. <laughs> <laughs> and I dare say, you can... actually, what we're, what we're doing now? See, we were down twelve to nine last night. Actually, it was just a ploy by the Americans, so we get invited back next year, so we don't beat you guys too bad. <laughs> Isn't it time that you guys had home advantage? Excuse me? Isn't it time that you guys had home advantage? Exactly. I, I believe that. I believe this event should be held in America at least one year, if not every time. <laughs> of course, the way the American spectators are, they, they like the um, uh, out-of-town players, so to speak. You know, the uh, people coming in from afar, and uh, they've traditionally liked that. And they usually wind up pulling for the um, outsiders. <laughs> what, what sort of crowds would you get for this in the, the States, Roger? Do you think the people would come and watch it? Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. We get between uh, four and 500 uh, people to every one of our events, you know, at every round. Well, it looks like Ronnie's in good shape to take the first rack here. Well, we Roger, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Uh, really enjoyed your company during the last few days. And, uh, well, it looks like it's going to be a fabulous finish. Thank you. First rack there to Roddy O'Sullivan and an appreciative crowd here in Dagenham. Let's join Sid and Jim for the rest of the action. Thanks, Jeff. And I agree with 99% what Big Rog said, but about Americans supporting the opposition, ain't too sure. I think they're sportsmanlike audiences but I don't think they'd actually cheer on the Brits or the Euro lads. Anyway, lovely to see the spirit of pool echoed in the character of Roger Griffiths there. And it's good, Jim, isn't it, to see snooker genius like Ronnie adapt so quickly to this game. Well, when you've got the ability with a pool cue, chances are you're gonna have it with a snooker cue and vice versa. Good break from Massey. Two ball nicely on. And just to remind you, we call it quits at six o'clock. Whoever's ahead then wins the Moscone Cup. At the moment, it's Sweetly Pies 12 11 in Europe's favor. And there's been cries of, come on, you, Yerp. From the Essex crowd, as Massey tries to pull it level one apiece in racks, opening sets. Best of three racks, first of two wins, sets rather. And you've got to go best of five racks, but you've got to go two clear. And Ronnie has taken two notable scalps. Certainly have an Essex knees up if he could do Massey here. Yeah, what a match Ronnie thrilled the fans with last night when he took out five-time world champion Earl the Pearl Strickland. The crowd went nuts. And certainly O'Sullivan, I think, adding to the belief that he can play this game and with the best of them. Nice use of the rail there to get position. But I don't think he's quite where he intended, Jim. No, it looks like he may have to play the green to the bottom right as we look because that's the only pocket that appears to be available to Mike. Certainly the easiest one, but this is going to require a good shot. And O'Sullivan's already taken the first rack in this opening set. Well, I call him Tennessee Tarzan. And occasionally when Tarzan was swinging through the jungle yodeling, on his vein, he hit the tree. Massey's tree could come in the shape of Ronnie O'Sullivan. His skills firmly rooted in snooker, but he's adapted to this. Beautifully, what a weight on the shot. You wouldn't think he didn't know the rules 48 hours ago. Well, something else to bear in mind, he's been doing this all with a snooker cue. He's knocking him in like shell and peas. Ronnie O'Sullivan takes the first two racks here in the opening set. Just he what would he do passing. with a proper stick, Jim? If he's playing with a, this good with a snooker cue. Absolutely. It's 2-0 to O'Sullivan. 
if he ever got a pool cue and learned how to adapt that way, he'd just have that many more weapons in his arsenal. So, here we go. The Ronnie O'Sullivan saga becoming a key discount to the overall theme of the Moscone. One more rack, Europe and he takes the set. He beat Strickland in a real humdinger last night. And who's to say if the ghost of Minnesota Fats came back with a cue, Ronnie couldn't handle that as well. Well, that was a good break from O'Sullivan. He had that white parked in the middle of the table before another ball careened around and took it away, but didn't get a, one, didn't get a ball off the break that time. But it was very good control. One of the stars of this tournament, Yeri with the one and only James Warren White. The whirlwind. Uh, Jimmy, unfortunately, had a withdraw from this tournament and Ronnie's come in and uh, he certainly filled Jimmy's Gucci loafers. Nice angle on the red three. Cross the table for the pink four. <coughs> Risked enough but just snidged the knuckle. Tense time in the game, crowd absolutely silent. That distinctive pat of the third finger as he bridges. Massey shouldn't have any trouble with the orange or any of them. But even he knows one slip. And Ronnie will be in like the whippet after a bonio. Bubbled. Well, Mike, looking at the American guys up in the stands, he's saying, wow, thank you, God, that one disappeared. Yep, you'd have still been a sinner. That wouldn't have gone in. Finger bridge rather than the open knuckle bridge. You'll usually see in this country. Gotta give it to the crowd, appreciating good pool. It's for two one. Good, rock. good reply from Mike Massey. The man they call Tennessee Tarzan, known predominantly for his trick shot mastery. He's traveled the world over as an ambassador of American nine ball. Right now he's in the heat of competition with one of the best from the world of snooker. Rocket Ronnie O'Sullivan still leads in this opening set by two racks to one. An interesting technical point. I'm sure Jim White shall uh, develop. But Alison Fisher, in the last 12 months, has really shown the American ladies how to play pool, and she's got one of the best cue actions in, in the world of snooker. Ronnie uh, Agaba is an almost perfect cueist. Technique is everything in any cue sport. The mental game, obviously, once you become a professional, becomes that much more important, and certainly any of the American players, as will the Europeans, could attest to that. As Massey breaks off, nothing finding its way into a hole. Ronnie dishing out, not champagne, but real pain to Massey. He's trying to force an error in position. <coughs> if Ronnie takes this rack, he's taking the first set. Use the one to kick the green six in. Didn't allow for the possible tickle on the orange there. 
That could be costly because he's developed the two ball right over the bottom corner. So if Mike can get this one, just come over the other side of the table, he's going to be on the two. And the balls lie in pretty sweet. So if he keeps his cue and neat, looking good for two alike in this opening set. Short a pace on that one though. This is a much more difficult cut into the bottom corner than Mike Massey would have liked. He needed to come off that side cushion. He wanted the angle to take the cue ball down for the pink four, but now that's almost impossible without going around the table. That's the ball on. That's the next one. Vital time then. For the man who wrote the Country Western Classic, if you were the cue ball and I was the cue, he made the right mess of that. It was unlucky, but this lets Ronnie in for the set. And just, if you've got earplugs at home, either for swimming or just blocking out noise, stand by because this crowd will go ballistic if Ronnie can take this set. And it's on in the next few seconds. He's looking to plant the red. He now has got an easy shot on the pink. Position on the orange should be a doddle. D A W D L E double. The seven ball, the brown. He's going to have to screw back for the eight. Slightly over screwed into the middle pocket. And this nine for Europe and O'Sullivan to take the opening set. Chicago Bear, one mistake, and Ronnie was in like anything that ever left Ed Canaveral. Terrific performance, and the form that O'Sullivan has displayed throughout continues on here. This is Europe. This is the lag in a vital match. Ronnie O'Sullivan has just taken first set. USA. The American can't lose another set here. Best of three. First rack, second set. Here's the card. Wiley did the captain's job on fact A2 zip. Roger Griffiths put paper to the hoops of Andy Richardson the leads. And at the minute, <laughs> snooker gem Ronnie O'Sullivan is showing the old wizard, the Merlin of Magic Pool, Mike Massey, getting a few tricks taught him by young Ronnie. Well, it's funny you'd mention that. There's a bit of a history between these two. Mike Massey, as I said, he's quite an ambassador, traveled the world over. He's been in Britain displaying the trick shots that he's come to be known from. And he met Ronnie when Ronnie was 16 years old. And he predicted a bright future for young O'Sullivan then. Again, the lineup, the next match after this one, Mika Immonen from Finland versus Shannon the Cannon Dalton. It doesn't stop for a moment. We don't miss a beat. Ralph Suke after that against Earl the Pearl Strickland. Ortman the captain against Shannon Dalton. And then a pass to kill to get tickets to see. Davis No Sullivan against Strickland and Wiley. That will be a pearler. Meanwhile, Ronnie showing the sort of form that could take apart any opponent. Then completing the lineup, Suke, Hopkins. Suke, the world champion, should be a Euro banker. 
Bundesbanker, in fact, German lad. And Ronnie who came here as a novice. He's playing as though he's been a puller since he was a novice. Brilliant pull by Ronnie. If he ever wants to move to America, he'll have a future in nine ball. That's virtually assured, the sort of form that he's shown us here in this 96 Moscone Cup. The rocket has truly taken off and he's taken the fans and spirit of the European team with him. So we have a Chris Christopherson lookalike and a Liam Gallagher lookalike here in Dagenham Live, folks, on Sky Special American Sport Day. And young Ronnie's a bit chuffed. It's showing Americans that he is a lad who could come to rule the roost at pool. Four balls on the break. Wow. <coughs> Only 14 mile an hour. So echoing Professor White's theory of ballistics, it's not the whacking speed of up to 20 to 26 mile an hour. It's the line, the length, and the precision. Yes, I wonder if the Americans are gonna take note of that break speed because they've had a lot of trouble off the break getting balls in. Obviously, Ronnie slowing it down, knocking in four. That's the most we've seen off a break. Massey pockets that crisp pink. And I think Mike entertained thoughts of possibly flicking that nine in off that as well. Now he'll just go through the motions, addition up. Green six into the middle. Just hold the cue ball. Well, whether you work in a chip shop or you play pool for thousands of dollars, dishing up is the phrase, means what the great John Pullman used to call, going to your work, my boy. When the ball's line easy, my boy, that's when you must be professional. One, one. But Massey is going to have to fight I'm to win this set, and he's going to take it. Set. Well, after a dynamic break from O'Sullivan, he failed to capitalize on that rack, and he allowed the American back in to tie things up in the second set. But Ronnie's already taken the first set, so the pressure is really on Mike Massey right now. And no matter how much Ronnie capitalizes, this man will not capitulate. Twelve eleven in Europe's favor. This a vital. Match first to 16 is the winner, but the clock is running down. It's whoever is ahead at six o'clock in this match wins the Moscone. Absolutely right. If 16 isn't reached by that deadline, we'll have a champion regardless. The Europeans, I'll remind you, in the form of Jimmy White, a sudden death against Machine Gun Lubutera a year ago, took the sudden death leg and hoisted the Dortmund the trophy aloft here in Essex a year ago. As old Strickland said in our film piece, the Moscone Cup is going home. Well, we shall see in the next four hours and Sky's special day of American sport. Coming back for the red three is Mike Massey. And he looks perfect, and after that, the pink four, the next ball on. A lot of screw there. This He's easy orange, but he knows that if he makes a snidge of a slip, Ronnie will be in. That, you see, that is a badness by one of his standards. Just played a bit aside and lost the cue ball a bit. Flicked off a little more than Mike thought it would. But that is really a let off. That was a simple pop by his standards. Ronnie looking to hide the orange. Good shot. It's 
going to be demands a bit of work to make a hit on it. He's really got the measure of this game of nine ball, does O'Sullivan. Using his snooker skills precisely at the right times. Good escape, but where's it going to be left? It could be sticking up. No, it's rolled quite kindly. Can he? It's, it's a snidgy cut. So thin. Oh, no, lucky. Sullivan failing to negotiate the fine clip on the five. And even though Mike Massey missed a very simple shot, finds himself back in looking at the same ball he missed. He won't miss this time. He's lost the first set to the American legend. But he's looking good now for 2-1, set two. He's looking now, he wants to bring the cue ball off the bottom cushion, side cushion, miss the cannon on the black for position onto the seven ball, the brown one on the left side. This is a vital hit. And in thinking about position, he missed the putt. How often have we seen that? Well, that's right, overcut it. The cue ball wasn't on the line anywhere near that Mike intended. Those knuckles, every bit as deadly as you, Banks. Vital four balls then, Jim, because if Ronnie can put them away, he could get one rack away. If he can take these balls, put them one rack away from this match. Lovely. Oh, lovely. Oh. As fast as the six went in, so too did the middle pocket devour the white. Desperately unlucky for O'Sullivan. Tried to stay out, but in the end, it looks now like Mike Massey's gonna be taking yet another rack here. In this, the second set, and one that he has to win for the Americans. Easy cushion roll. Easy black. Easy position on the nine. <coughs> so for two one inside the second set. I think Massey just wanting the reassurance, a bit of resin on the cue. And it's a vital, well, he's oh, taking his time. Just for 2 1. Second set. On the rack. Who is it? Heightened the drama by walking away from the table and just putting a little powder so that the cueing action would be smoother. Regardless, Mike Massey leads in the second set, two racks to one, but trails one set to nil. And in the overall score, it's Europe 12, USA 11 in a race to 16 for the Moscone Cup of 1996. So a bit of poise theatricals there from Massey. Could teach Kenneth Branagh a thing a bit about stagecraft. Poised himself, wasn't gonna be rushed into that shot. Well, the Americans are gonna be flying home tomorrow. Wow. And they wanna be taking that trophy with them. And at the moment, Ronnie's doing his best to help them. He's had two awful bits of luck. An in-off from a very acute angle, and now an in-off the break. Well, he's left three of the balls after this break. The balls disperse so well, three of them have found their way right over pockets. Two top corners in the right center. So O'Sullivan is in a desperate position in this set. Yep, it is game where luck comes in, just like in darts, if you miss the 19, you drift into the three. You can have a break that looks great, but one slip and your opponent can benefit from it. After the two ball, gonna be looking at the red three, he'll plant that onto the four ball, the pink one. That's the one over the pocket. 
and once it stops on the pocket, he will tickle it in, head for the orange. <coughs> so this should be like learning the two times table for a maestro like him. It's going to go to two sets apiece as long as there's not a totally fickle finger of infelicitness come in. Well, that was a terrible shot from Mike, and I think he's the first one to tell you he's made this a lot more difficult because he's got to get back for the seven ball. He's left himself very awkward on this orange five. The seven, the brown one at the top end of the table as we look. Seen these missed, as they say, in some of the dives I get into. This is got to be about as thin as a cut gets. This should have been relatively simple for Mike, Absolutely. and right now he's fighting the the negative thoughts that have crept in. What should have been simple is now made very difficult. This is a real tough shot. And it could well be a set winner, and Mike knows that he's taken a lot of time. He's got to gather his concentration, focus his attention to this Jim seven ball. Jim said so spot on earlier. Technique has got what you need when you're a professional, and then it's mind games. That is a super recovery. He's got a mind like a steel trap, and he just showed us an example of it right there. He held it together and potted that seven ball. Oh, that's a real mess. That is making it as awkward as he could have made it. He's going to bank this into the corner pocket, or at least attempt to, bottom right. Tennessee bank. Works! Rock on second set. One set each. USA. Mike Massey had to give us an exhibition of super shot making there in order to get that set. Could have been so easy, but in the end, he got over the finish line, and that's what counted. I'm sure relief from Mike Massey. Very dangerous going near that white again. He's had an in off the break and an in off when he looked like a clearance. And unfortunately, nothing down. Really getting his shoulder into it though. Controlling the white. And I don't want you letters suggesting that I'm a Euro uh, fanatic. I'm in fact a Euro cynicist. I'm not rooting for Europe or the States. My Canadian friend here in the commentary box and me are totally impartial. Got a lot of friends on both teams. This is just entertaining nine ball. And you and I, Sid, as well as the viewers at home are the ones that are benefiting from this. Um, absolutely. Tickle. Along the cush, leaves the cush, misses the pot. Well, that pocket has not been kind to Mike Massey. He shakes his head in disbelief. He's missed a couple balls to that one. It's just like the one nearest the door, the white cross in Putsy. Times are bubbled out of that. That pocket, well, it's usually the middle pockets you have your bother like that with. Absolutely, Sid. But now Mike is going through the punishment of having to watch O'Sullivan. Clear these colors up again that he knows could well have been his. One set apiece, deciding set. Ronnie looking good for the first track. 12 11. Remember, 6 o'clock is like the time that Cinder's clogs turned from glass. It's 6 o'clock. This match is over. Whoever's ahead then takes the Moscone. So Oliver Ortman, the Euro captain, will be willing Ronnie on and. Made a mistake, then run a fluke. 
Absolutely, look at that. That cue ball finishing tight up against the eight ball, even though Ronnie attempted the brown into the center pocket. He'd be very relieved to see where the cue ball stopped. And now Mike Massey, again, his table knowledge is gonna be called into play here. He uses the diamond system. That's what he's using now. We talked about it, those dots along the outside of the table. As we've said, the clock is really ticking on America. They've got to get to 12 all, get things locked up here. That's as big a stick up as Jesse James and the boys ever did. And this is an easy cushion roll. Needed a bit of knuckle there. He's living dangerous, his run. He can't believe he missed it. Sometimes these big pockets, you take them for granted. You think you hit anything close and it's going to drop. First rack, final set, you have Well, you saw it with your own eyes, folks. Live on Sky on American Sport Day, Ronnie stuck it up. Bad miss that. And that's one. That could well be the turning point in this match. O'Sullivan could have been 1-0 ahead. Instead, it's the Americans enjoying that lead. 1-1 one, one in sets in this best of three. We're in the deciding set to see if the scoreline will still hold a European lead or whether the Americans' comeback will be completed. Second round. Well, I don't know if Ronnie is related way back in history to the great heavyweight John L. Sullivan. But he's going to need to count a punch here. Yeah. Delicate cut into the middle bag. Two. Watch how near it gets before hitting the right. Used the knuckle nicely there. Beard, oh, just too heavy, but I think he can feather in the red. No. Just a foul. containing shot, foul. but Bassi that's a foul. He's claiming a foul. The reason being, you've got to contact a cushion after you contact the object ball. O'Sullivan. Ronnie's inexperienced there. Absolutely, he's not aware of the rules, and look at the plant, 3-9. The crowd is going to be stunned, but those are the nine ball rules. This then. This then to put rack. them one rack USA. away from making the score line 12 12. Then we would be in for dancing fun in Dagenham as Mike explains the rules, explains the rules to the crowd. There's got to be contact of the cush by, by a ball that you're playing or any ball on the table after contact with the object ball is made. So those are the rules of nine ball. And as you said, Ronnie's inexperience coming into play and the beneficiary on this occasion, Mike Massey. But again, had Ronnie known that, he knew he would have had to play that at pace. So, if Massey can take the rack, he beats Ronnie. And that would be Ronnie's first Good defeat in three out in this tournament. So, the crowd of his own support as Ronnie's lot try and cheer him on here. It's a, it's a fairly profitable spread. Sad to say, the American in play. I thought you said you were impartial, Sid. Impartiality and excitement equals sometimes <laughs> a strange equation. <laughs> Without a doubt, advantage Massey right now. Leading 2-0 in the deciding third set is Ronnie O'Sullivan going to go down to his first defeat in this 1996 Moscone Cup. Beautifully weighted, blue. If you're a fan of high drama, in one sense, You'd like to see the Americans tie it up because the scoreline would be deadlocked at 12 apiece. And everything would be resting on this evening's matches. Massey 
Looking good to make it 12 apiece. And we would there then be in for three hours and 40 minutes of tremendous drama before the last page of the last act at six o'clock. Here goes the pink. Here goes the orange. He's nice. He's nicely placed to get. He's had side on that, and he didn't want it because now he's got to play side to get back for the six. And you can see that running out of position on the orange five has cost him position on the six. And now he's going to have to play safe. And I can see him here pushing the six up the top end of the table, keeping the cue ball down in behind the, the eight ball, or just bumping the six over to the cushion. But surely he can't be taking this on. He did. He did. And I don't think it's ruled. Well, you were right. Jim, about the danger inherent in trying that. That was absolutely thistle down thin, that. Here goes Ronnie then to save. Looking to save the match. It's going to be 2 1, the simple nine. Keeping O'Sullivan and Europe's hopes alive. Down it goes. An unreal, what I feel, a careless mistake from Mike Massey playing position onto the five from the four. It should have been him, should have been elementary, but it wasn't. Strickland will be in action again in a dynamite pairs combination. Strickland is the man who Ronnie beat last night. A volatile bunch of adrenaline. A great, a brilliant player. Ronnie took him last night, though. Shook the joint. And there'll be more shaking when Strickland plays again. Could be an even more dramatic circumstances, Jim. Well, that was a heave ho that went begging as he left the one on for O'Sullivan. The three ball, the next ball on, the two, Mike made off the break. The one ball certainly passes. The red three will be next. So here goes for me. It's not in very good position for the red. This cuts in though, straight up the top left. It's gonna be very thin though. These are the kinds of sometimes bubble. Whoa, beauty, beauty. The pink four ball. And Ronnie's gotta follow through and make sure he doesn't follow through too much because that's dead straight in that four. Ronnie looking to sew up the match. Hill Hill as the Americans say, do one set each. And 2-2 two, two if Ronnie can do the biz with the remaining balls. Orange, bottom right, and the long green six shouldn't be a problem. He's perfectly positioned for the brown. Now they're really sussing the action. Is that they're watching a UFO on the screen in there. I'll identify the flying object. It's Ronnie O'Sullivan, snooker gem. And it would be. I'd like to know what's going through the head of some of the Americans. Right, wow, look then. One set each. Two racks each in the decider. You couldn't want more tension than we got in Dagenham in the Moscone, folks. Well, in the practice room, Mark Forsyth is with a very tense American captain, CJ Wiley. How does he see the situation as he develops here in the hall? CJ, this is getting very, very tense now. Already to draw level, but it's a hard one. 
Yes, it is. Uh, my hands are sweating as I watch this. <laughs> this is a very important match, probably the most important one of the tournament so far. You must be delighted with the way the morning's gone so far, and you could top it off now by just going level. Yes. You know, we were, our goal was to win three in a row and get ourselves back into this so we could, uh, you know, try to get ahead. <laughs> Are we in sight then of the Americans coming back and do you really believe that you can win it? The team seems to be lifting a little bit here. Yes, I mean, like I said, this is an important match. If, if we win this one, I think we'll win. If we don't, uh, we got our hands full. CJ, best of luck. Back to you, Sid. Thank Thanks, Mark. Nice, tense stuff. Uh, not many captains show such control. I su suggest a CJ there. And Massey here could have a problem. Could have a problem. I don't think there's a direct hit on the one. Well, the one thing that Mike Massey has to contend with is he knows this match should be over. He's had two chances already. Why the dangerous leave of the nine two inches from the pocket? Well, I don't know, but he's left O'Sullivan an it's outside chance here to double that one ball back down towards the nine. I don't know exactly what Mike was playing, but I'm sure that wasn't it. Well. I think there's some question you can ask him to play again. You can of, yeah, he's asking about the rule on the push out and John Williams explaining that. Mm. Yeah, he's asking no, about the in. cushion conduct or asking the opponent to play again. I think he wants the push out rule sorted out. No, what Ronnie wanted to know is if he could just bump the nine in, does the push out continue? And uh, referee John Williams has just told him that no, Ronnie, you push the nine in, it's cue ball in hand for Mike Massey. So that's not what he wants. And he, I, I, I hope for Ronnie's sake anyway that he understands the rule properly because I wouldn't want to see it uh, it come into play like it did earlier. Well, That's Massey back in. Yeah, I, I really don't know about this. Ronnie obviously doesn't see the shot, but it almost looks like you can take the cue ball into the safe end, but Mike's going to be taking this on. Yeah. A double kiss, including a bump and a fluke. Yeah. Mike's nodding and shaking his head at the same time. Now he's having a look to see if he can possibly attack the nine off the two ball. Two ball, cushion nine, and in an ideal world for Mike Massey, the well, nine into the pocket. The blue is an easy angle, but watch where the white goes. Yes, ooh, nearly flicked it in. <laughs> well, Sid, I think everyone in the hall heard you yell yes there. And down at the bottom rail, there's a plant, orange to nine, that I'm sure Ronnie is having a swift, swift gander at. So it rolls past, is the one. The red's no trouble. The four, the pink's no trouble. And there's Bob Moore from Hong Kong. So in the action. Yes, a friend. And again, his new bride, Joanne, there. They've really been such good fans of this match. I'm sure they are, as well as everybody else, really getting into the flow of the pressure that's starting to develop here. Now, he's... Oh, and lucky. Oh. Well, Sullivan's lost the cue and, ball. And there's the plant. Orange, orange nine. Orange to nine is about as juicy as a bunch of mandarins. Watch this. This is the cruel side of pull. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. This for three, two. For CJ to stop tearing his hand in the practice room. USA. Mike Massey takes the nine. He's leading again. 3 2 in the deciding set. You've got to win by two racks clear, remember. Mike Massey again with a big opportunity to give the USA the point that they so desperately need to pull back on level terms with Europe. All right. I thought we couldn't surpass last year's Moscone for drama, Jim. We're sweating like a pair of swamp donkeys in this commentary box, and I'm sure the players are too, but it's boiling up. 
The final session rules are these. They've been just told that two teams, seven players as usual. USA One set, that's the key bit too there. It will not now be the best of three sets. It will be single, sudden death sets each match. I'm talking about sudden death. If Massey proceeds through here, it's 12 apiece, Jim. Absolutely. But again, there you see it. It's four days play, the 31 matches, first to 16, one point for each match. But play finishes at 6 p.m. The Americans are under a time clock here because they know they've got to pull level. Ronnie, looking at the, the one doesn't go top left, I think. I think he's going to play safe. Hides it behind the orange. Let's see where the one lands. That's... That. And let's go in the practice room, see how CJ and the American lads are taking this now. CJ, that change in rules moving towards this afternoon. One set only. Does that put the Americans in a strong position now? Well, it just puts more pressure on each game. I mean, uh, the, the less amount of games that you play, the more pressure. So uh, it's going to be exciting, you know, to see how each player handles this. There seems to be a lot of strength in the Americans in that first set, though, so it, you must feel it does put you at a slight advantage. Well, I'd like to think that we're always at an advantage. <laughs> That's just my personal opinion. But uh, I'm glad that we're back in, in this match, you know. And uh, I'm looking forward to this afternoon, seeing how it goes. And Oliver, for the European team, you haven't been starting as well in the sets as the Americans. The pressure will really be on, especially if you lose this game. Well, it's getting tough right now. We were at 12 to 9, and it's almost 12 all right now, so it's getting tough with the nerves. So the nerves are going to decide the match right now. So we have to see what's going on. Ronnie, he missed a few balls, but we'll see. I hope my friends still have to fight, and uh, they, I hope they're going to make it good for the team. Is the pressure now beginning to tell on the Europeans? Well, sure. Well, uh, we played just one set right now, and um, I think there's a lot of pressure to the Europeans right now because we were ahead 12 to 9. Now it's 12 to 12, so it looks like it. Uh, they're getting nervous, but I don't hope it's going to be too much pressure on that, that we are still going to win. Just how important is this last three set game before we go into the one set in the afternoon? That's right, yeah. It's just one set right now because of the, because of the time, and uh, well, it's still tough. We'll have to see. It's right now. I don't know. A very important part coming up now, back to Sid. Well, thanks, and this could sink Ronnie and go 12-12. Can't see Massey missing it. Blue onto the nine, and... <laughs> da, 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 da. Yes, Massey pulls it level at 12 apiece. And congratulations from Ronnie and a very happy American team, I'm sure. In the end, it was a great effort from Massey. He's wavered as he saw the finish line, but he got over it first, and that's what counts. It doesn't say how, it just says who. Mike Massey takes a much needed point for Europe, and, or for the USA, and it's now 12-12.